Hi, this is Vincent from Viva Europe again. Um, this time we're gonna show you a lot of tips and tricks and we're gonna explain you exa exactly how to customize your EV Hive setup. Um, first of all, you just plug in a standard USB cable. Um, it's, it's like a printer cable. Um, there's a USB connection on the side. You connect it and that's it. Um, then you turn on the power. You have to make sure also high voltage is present because the controller will only turn on if you have high voltage as well. Um, so now we have the connection. So now we have connected the USB cable. We powered the EV Hive unit. Now we are ready to make connection to the SmartView software. Um, it's recommended to use the software you have from us, uh, so we are 100% sure you have the correct version of the SmartView program. Um, it's also recommended to make the cable connection, USB cable connection first and then start the SmartView program. Uh, right now we have a connection immediately, but if you don't have this, you go to the connection and then you can select the COM port. It could be that you have several COM ports or that you have no COM port. Um, then you select the right one or you check what the problem is. Uh, if we click on the home button, we go back to this main screen. Another useful hint is that on the main screen on the top, you see the Tau Sync logo. This will also show if you have connection with the EV Hype mode controller. So, in this main screen, you see four sections. On the left, there's a monitor part. Here you can see all the live data of the motor controller and the motor. Uh, right, you have the diagnose part. Here you can see all the errors. That's useful for troubleshooting. On the configure part, that makes sense. You can configure the motor system. And on the manage part, I will only show you one important thing because you don't need to do any firmware updates. We already did that at EV Europe. Um, but if you click on the clone section and then clone to file, you can clone your parameters from your motor controller, save them on the desktop or whatever you want, and then send them to EV Europe. So we can have a look if you have any issues or if you need any help. So right now I just want to show you a bit about the monitor system. If you go to monitor and then to the inputs, you can see the actual status of your inputs. So you can actually see if you have connected all your signals correctly. For example, like you see now, it's on the standard forward map. And if we push the reverse button, it will go to profile two, which is the reverse. We can also check, for example, the brake signal like this. As you see here, we are pushing the brake now and check if the signal comes in correctly. Another useful part is the battery area. Here you can see the live voltage of your battery system. So at the moment we are at 115 volt, which is the actual voltage of our battery system. So now we turn to the home screen, then to the diagnose part. And here you will see the active faults. In our system there are none at the moment, but if there are, you will see the error code here. And there's something very useful here I want to show you, that if you go to the question mark here on the right corner, you will, you will go directly to the page in the manual with the active faults, and you can immediately search for the code you have um, and it will also show you what it means so if it's blocking or if it's limiting the motor controller if it's blocking it will not run at all if it's limiting it's just limiting the power of the motor controller so now we we'll go back to the home screen and there's something very useful I'd like to point out and that's the thumbs up if it's green everything's okay 
if it's orange, it's limiting, and if it's red, it's blocking, and then you need to search for the fault in the diagnose part. So, we go back to home, and now we get to the fun part. Customize your motor system. So in configuration, we have three main parts. Um, the motor and control part, we do not recommend you to change anything since we have already set it up to the maximum efficiency and power um, while we have tested the motor at our workbench. And if you do change some parameters in here, you can change the running of the motor quite badly. So if you want to do so, please ask us first. So at the system configuration, I only want to show you one thing, and that's about the battery system. Um, if you did not tell EV Europe which batteries you intend to use, or if you don't tell us any voltages, you can set these voltages up by yourself in the battery section. You have to do this at the data sheet. You also have to fill in the capacity of your system here. And you can set the voltages at the protection tab. Uh, useful to tell you as well is that the blue line is showing the actual voltage. So at the voltage we are right now, there is no limitation. You can set the limitations at the under voltage section and you can set limitations at the over voltage section. The over voltage section is very useful um, because it will also limit the regeneration of your vehicle. For example, if your battery is completely topped up, uh, it will lower the regeneration current to avoid an uh, overvoltage of your battery system or the battery contactor clicking in. If you do want to change one of the parameters, I will show you how to do it in a few simple steps. For example, if I want to change the capacity of the battery system, I will change the value and then you will see the save button appearing. You push the save button and then you will also notice a blinking key on the corner of the screen. Um, that means your controller needs to be restarted in order to change the parameters. So you have to push it, the motor unit will restart and the parameter has changed. So now we can go to the traction area and here we can change the profiles and the rates of the motor unit. To start with in global, you can change the maximum RPM of your motor. It will change it in all of the profiles immediately. You can also change the acceleration time it's set at 0.2 seconds standard. Um, if you change this, it will also change it in all your drive profiles. What you also have in this area is the vehicle parameters. Here you can set a gear ratio and you will need to set this if you are using an external display that's showing the speed of the vehicle in order it to show the correct speed at the display. To change this, it's just a matter of play around with the parameters until your display shows the correct speed. So, next thing I want to show you is how to check if your throttle is mapped correctly. You go to throttle and then to map per second. And here you will see your throttle curve. The blue line is your actual throttle position and the red line is the curve and you can easily change this by dragging the line. So now you need to check if your throttle reaches the full stroke of the throttle. Um, to do this, we recommend to make sure the wheels of the vehicle are off the ground. You push the brake, so normally then the motor should not spin with the brake signal on. And then you can check if your throttle reaches the full stroke. If that is not the case, you can easily change the curve. Make sure you also do this on the reverse section like you see here. The next thing I want to show you is how to set your profiles. First we go to torque limits and then by other. Here you see three profiles. 
and the profile one is the standard profile. So we set it at 100% torque, which means 100% of the power is available in the profile. Um, if you limit this, it will limit the maximum power of your controller. But what we also do often is we lower the speed it will get to the maximum torque. This you can do at the torque mode section and then at the rates. So if you lower this rate, it will take a longer time before it to reach the maximum torque of the motor, which will often smoothen your ride quite a bit. In our experience, values above 200 percent per second do not improve your ride at all. So I recommend not to go any higher than 200. So with all of these values, you can just change them and play around with them until you have completely smoothened and satisfied the ride of your vehicle. The last part of the profiles you can change is the maximum RPM, so the speed limits. You do this in the speed limits by order tab and here you can set the maximum RPM of both the forward and the reverse profiles. The last thing I want to explain is how the three different torque profiles behave. Um, the driving torque is of course the maximum torque you have for driving, but the region torque is the maximum amount of torque you will have for regeneration when you release the throttle. Um, you also have the region torque by brake, but that is the maximum torque you will have when you push the brake pedal, so when the brake signal comes in. So you see that we normally set the region torque by neutral at a lower value and then a high amount of region when you push the brake pedal. So, so that was the last thing I wanted to show you. Um, I hope it was interesting for you. Um, for more information, please have a look at our other instruction movies. Thanks for watching.